Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for being here tonight. Lauren Lahav here in Las Vegas, National Marketing Director and um, YOLO International. Very honored to have our dear Christine um, Drummond who's on the line tonight. And it's kind of ironic, Christine, that you are with us tonight. Um, a couple of reasons I will share. One is we have been, you know, really canine how do we make it better for people and um, we were just say maybe it's a little too much for people to go from Cheryl's call to this call now, but I think it's actually a good thing to maybe have this as a training call and really a kick in the butt call, I think, um, for everyone. And it's interesting that you would be the, the speaker this evening, and I'll go through your bio in a second, but um, I just was on the plane coming back from Washington, D.C., my mom just moved up to and I've been I've done four trips in the past month and a half it's been interesting when life happens um as we know I think the biggest thing is that you know we talk about all these things that you know we want to do when we create this you know this vision for ourselves but we talk about like the places we want to go what we want to do for our kids and you know blah 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 I, mean, I think we really think too short term because I think a big thing that we don't talk about is really what do we need to do when our parents get older you know, um, how do we take care of our parents? I know for you, that's something that maybe you can address this evening as well, because I know that it's something that is directly affecting you. But um, the reason I bring that up is last night, I was, I was flying back from DC. I was flying back, as I was flying back from DC, I'm gonna ask Christy to mute herself. Um, as I was flying back from DC, the, I had on my computer, it was a slideshow. I don't know if you remember it. It was from Nashville when we had that big party um, in Nashville. And that was, that, like I said, that was five years ago. And it was interesting to look at that and see how many people are still, you know, still doing the business. Um, and it was also interesting to see people that aren't doing the business um, five years later. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I and it was interesting today because today I went to some of those people that aren't doing the business that it got too hard or it wasn't what they you know they it wasn't happening fast enough or they you know whatever that the the thing was they wanted to build their own brand whatever that it was and I went back to a lot of those people's pages today and it was interesting of I think ten people's pages that I went to um, they're still looking what is they going to do and I, I was thinking oh, i'd be interesting to call those people up today and honestly to say you know you had a home you know what what made you stop what made you you know give up a, a, over those times because i as, as, as you know my favorite example is that of the bamboo that i just did that video about and you know that that first year grows an inch second year, year grows an inch third year grows an inch and people that's when most people go well, I'm done you know it's not growing as fast as I want I'll get myself a ficus and then but if they were to stick in the game that fourth or fifth year um you know just how much it can grow and then after that fifth year really looking at the strong roots that it has and when all that bam and how quickly the bamboo really multiplies um and so I just it's just beautiful that you happen to be the person on the call Every time I close my eyes and think of you, I think of when we came back from that other conference, where I don't remember which one, where it was, Orlando, and you came back with one of your girls, and um, you know, we got busy. We got busy, and maybe you could share a little about that. So Christine is amazing. She's a large team over in Australia, a 100 club member, um, and she is just, just, just true, true as they come. Um, and, consistent as they come as well and uh, just a dear friend and it's an honor to be on this journey she i will say that you know when Linda was you know, first really getting started and decided to give it a strong yes it was not easy just so you guys know it was not easy over there in australia everybody told us that it wasn't going to work that there was no way that things were going to happen and linda met fee and they they really got busy um, and then they met Christine, and the, I would say to everybody right here on this call and anybody that listens to this call <laughs> later, um, they were the three amigos, you know, they really had each other's back, they buddied up with each other, um, and it would, but they, but they did do the do, 
Um, they got out there, they did events, they, you know, they set goal timelines with each other. Um, and that, but they're really the ones who I think when people started to go, oh, maybe it is possible over there in Australia. And uh, so, and it hasn't been easy. I mean, even, even, you know, what, Christine, I want you to really share about the, the down and dirty with everybody, for everybody to know what it really takes. But it's just like any business, you guys. That's just, that's just business. That's just life. But it's a great opportunity for us to really evaluate too. It's like, you know, I have this little sticker on my computer right here and it says, what do I need to do to make this business a bigger priority for myself? You know, and I think life just threw that at me. <laughs> you know, it was my mom getting sick, you know, and that's, so I was like, well, shoot, I better freaking get out there, keep putting on new front line, keep growing leaders. Um, and I think Christine does an amazing job with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to you. And if you don't mind talking about the, the ugly um, and uh, what it really takes. So I'm going to pass it on over to you, sweetie. Thank you, Lauren. And thank you for having me on tonight, everyone. And um, I am going to get down and dirty with you guys tonight because it hasn't been an easy ride. And I want to take you back to the beginning when I started, when my daughter was four months old and just being that lost parent. I just felt exhausted. I had lost my independence. I've now got this baby that is totally dependent on me. I had no money, no savings. Um, I felt like a shell of a person. I was a personal trainer at the time trying to rock up inspired and motivated and, you know, being, um, you know, someone for people to look up to. But in the background, I didn't have my shit together, you know, and it really affected my mental state, um, the, the way that I talk to myself. Um, and this business really did save me these products first and then the business and, um, consistency is key. I know you hear it all the time, but if there was a secret source, that's the secret source. Now, um, when I started nearly seven years ago, this is my seventh year coming up, which is so exciting. Um, I had never been involved with anything like this before. I had no idea what I was doing. Some days I still wake up thinking, what the hell am I doing? And I feel like I still don't know after seven years. Um, but you have those moments, right? You have those moments. And two months, um, was it? Uh, was, yeah, about two to three months into my business, um, my father-in-law was terminally ill and I took a whole month off. When you're watching someone close to you pass away before your very eyes, it's really hard. Can you guys still hear me? Oh, Lauren, you've just come off mute, honey. So I had to, I took a whole month off so that I could um, be there for my family. And I missed my fast tracks. I missed my fast track to SC. And um, yeah, I, it was the month after. So that happened in September. And then the month after, you know, literally like eight weeks in business, I jumped on a plane to come to America to my first international conference because Linda painted the vision. She implanted hope within me that this was the vehicle out of the situation I was in. I was so broke, I was borrowing money off my um, partner, Tom, to pay for the product. I had to borrow money off him to get my butt on a plane to come to America. And I just, when I got there, I just saw the bigger vision. I sat next to the hearing impaired people. Um, I saw the women get up on stage giving NMD speeches that had homeschooled seven kids, 10 kids. Uh, I saw the lady that fled her country with just the clothes on her back and now she reached NMD like a couple of years later. And I just felt so inspired and like I was in the right place at the right time. I actually was getting frustrated because I just wanted the conference to be over so I could get to work, so I could get back home and get stuck in and start reaching out to people. And um, I remember just getting to the airport to come back to Australia and I was already messaging people and I was absolutely verbally diarrheaing on people. I was, I was vomiting juice plus over everyone because I just, I, I couldn't explain what I'd just seen and what I'd just heard when I came over. But the first three letters that went on my vision board when I came home was NMD. I knew, I was only an SDVF at the time, but I knew that I was going to be a, be a NMD. I had no idea how I was going to get there. Linda and I were running green smoothie events in her, um, in her dining room. That's where we started with green smoothie events. And one by one, 
we would change somebody's life. Like it wasn't like we had a hundred people rocking up to these events. Some nights we had one person. Sometimes we had no one. Uh, sometimes we had five, but we didn't care. We loved what we did. We loved the education, the inspiration around it. And we were no excuses. I dragged Summer because my partner works away. So I dragged Summer to every single event. Not once did I ever use her as an excuse. There's photos of her when I'm presenting where she's wrapped around my leg when I'm up the front of the room giving my talk, my presentation. And I love those photos because that's how you do this business. That's how we roll, especially if you're a busy mama. And we give hope and inspiration to other mamas that you can raise your babies and build a business at the same time. And that's exactly what I've been able to do. Um, but as Lauren said, it hasn't been easy. You know, I was very product focused. I love the product first. And I think I got my first 20 customers in my first couple of weeks and I really sucked at recruiting. But I, we had this thing called 5-1 and I just went for 5-1 every single month. Five new customers, one new team and it allowed me to consistently build my business and some months I, I did better than that. Some months I did worse than that, you know, but that's what I strive for every month. And that's why I really feel like I've got a good, solid, strong foundation in my business and a solid check coming in now, you know, six, to seven years later. Um, so for me, um, and Lauren touched on this, um, there's been a few defining moments along the way that have really you know, for the first 18 months, I didn't have a why. They kept saying, you've got to have a why that makes you cry. You've got to have a why. And I couldn't figure out what my why was. You know, I didn't really need the money because um, Tom was providing everything and it wasn't like we were strapped for cash, but I knew I didn't have my independence, my financial independence. And I've been an independent woman my entire life. So that was ripping at me. But there was a defining moment where I went to my daughter's special person's day at daycare. And I remember rocking up and there weren't that many parents there. And I remember some kids peering through the fence, hoping that the next face that they saw was going to be their mum or their dad. And they had tears streaming down their faces. They just wanted their mum and dad to be there because they could see other parents were there for, you know, for their friends. And I remember taking some of these kids under my wing that day and, and playing with them. But I took Summer aside that day. And I said, that will never, ever be you. You will never, ever feel alone because mummy will be there. Oh, I get emotional thinking about it now. I will always be there for all your special moments. So every time I got a no, every time I got rejection, every time someone said, you're crazy for doing this, even my parents who are still waiting for me to become a teacher or a police officer, it just, I fi it fired me up to go, you know what? You're not going to stop me from being there for my daughter. And I'm the mum that I don't miss the school carnivals. I don't miss the cross countries. I don't miss the special person's day. I'm the mum that other mums ring to say, can you take a video of my daughter? Can you take a photo of my daughter running her race today? Because they can't be there. And you know what? That makes me friggin' sad. It makes me so sad that people are so stuck in the rat race of life that they can't even be there for these magic moments in their kid's life. And how, what message does that send to our kids? You know, if we can't be there for these special moments and, you know, I've got one lady that I was speaking to and her son still to this day, he, she is fighting for his love because now that she does this business, she can be there for the daughter for everything. And he feels like he's missed out. He feels like he wasn't loved growing up because the mum missed out on everything in his life and she's having to now make up for that and she's working doubly hard and I don't want that for my kids you know and I'm sure a lot of you on this call don't want that either so in order for me like that was my first defining moment and I, I just got fired up after that and then another defining moment was I've had so many but a recent one that I'm going to fast forward to is um well, I'll backtrack a couple of years. You know, a couple of years, my dad was diagnosed with dementia. And, you know, it was, it was a shock to all of us. And I remember that I was coming over to America to give my NMD speech. And this is the power of community. This is the power of being around positive, supportive people because everyone chipped in. And I know some of you are on this call and some of you from the American team, everyone chipped in and paid for my dad's flight to come and stand on stage with me in America 
while I gave my NMD speech. Now, my dad, his, his mind's gone now. It's totally gone. Um, but that's a memory that I will cherish forever. To have my parents my, and Tom and Summer standing on stage with me and knowing that this community made that happen, that's just, honestly, I'm indebted for that. It's the emotional revenue that we get from this business that you don't get anywhere else, anywhere else. And I've had about six career changes and I've never, ever had what this profession provides anywhere. And now in two weeks, I get to move our entire family 16 hours away from the Gold Coast to go and spend my, my dad's last days on this earth with him. Here we go again. <laughs> In a, in a country town so that we can be there to support him knowing that growing up he was always there for me. That's what this business allows us to do. And if I wasn't doing this, there's no way, no way in hell I could get back there and move the whole family down there to spend a year or two and support them through the most challenging time in their life. That's what this business gives us, guys. And I don't care if you're earning $50 a month or you're earning $55,000 a month. This business gives us things that you don't find anywhere else in the world, in any other career. And um, I, I just love that we are in control of our own destiny. We get to take the reins and really create our masterpiece life. But here's what happens. The voice in our head the negative voice, the voice of self-doubt, it takes over. It gets in the driver's seat too often and it doesn't shut up. But you have to, you have to fight through it. You have to put it in the back seat or the boot or even leave it out on the side of the road and take the driver's seat. Get back in or step into your power, you know. And I don't know any other community. Have a think about all the amazing mentors that we are surrounded by. Have, have a think about the timeless product, the bulletproof product that is life-changing for people that we get to share with people on a daily basis. It's insane, guys. There's never been a better time for you to step up, for you to play all out. Stop dipping your toe in and dipping it out and get in there, get in the arena and get your ass kicked. Stop sitting on the um, grandstand and watching everyone else. You know, if you're waiting for a sign, this is it, okay? This really is it. We are coming into this massive momentum phase and not enough people in the world know about Juice Plus and that's where we step in. That's where we can be the messengers. That is our only job is to be the messenger with these amazing products, with this amazing business. Get interested in people. Start caring about people enough to share it. Think about the people that you love and care about and then go and collect friends, go and build relationships, go and love on people, get to know them, what's going on in their world. Don't spam people, don't become a spammer or Anderson. You know, really get to know people and connect. I've got an A to Z strategy that I use every single month and basically what I do is on the first of the month, I start with the letter A, I go through my Facebook friends and I reach out to every single person that starts with the letter A right from Adams, right through Alex and beyond. And if I actually, I've got a shitload of people that start with A, so it actually takes me two days to get through them. Um, and then the next day I do the Bs. And then the next day I do the Cs. And then when I get to about the H, I, J, Ks, there's not that many people with their names starting like that. So sometimes I get through three letters in one day. But every month, my entire Facebook family are hearing from me. I'm staying connected. I'm checking in. I send videos. I send voice messages. I send text messages. I ask about the kids, the dogs, the family, the parents, whatever I can. I'm always taking notes and trying to remember things about them. You know, you've got to look at the longevity. You really do. And you've got to get out of your own way. There's never been a better time to just tell yourself to move over you know, and put your blinkers on, get really clear on what it is you want to achieve. If you don't want to go all the way and earn the multiple six figures and hit NMD, then that's okay. Just keep plugging into the community because that's amazing. And that will fill your cup enough for you to feel 
joy and happiness and support and it will hit some of your you know, six human needs. And if that's all that you want from this, amazing. But if you keep doing the talk and saying you want to go all the way, but you're not walking the walk, then it's time to step up, guys. And um, I just went to a Fraser Brooks event on the weekend, Fraser Brooks and Rob Sperry, and it was absolutely amazing. <coughs> and Fraser's got a really simple strategy that for every hour of activity that you do, you do an hour of personal development. So you are constantly growing and taking action, growing and implementing, growing, taking action, growing and implementing. You're not just becoming one of these self-development junkies that are just, you know, um, love just jumping on the trainings and you think that that's you getting busy and you doing the business. It's not. You need to have the conversations. I don't know if you guys are on Teamsy, but that's an incredible tool to use that helps you organize your office, helps you organize your contacts. Every day after I do my 5 a.m. morning ritual, between 6 and 7, I've knocked out my high-paying activities in an hour just by logging onto Teamsy because it gives me every single person I need to follow up with. I add my people, I reach out to my team, I reach out to my customers, and it's done in an hour. And then whatever else I get done for the day, I can pour into my team. I can jump on three-way calls. I can, you know, do other business building activities. It's like the cream on top of the cake. Yeah. So do the high pain stuff first. Do the things that are the hardest first, which is adding new people, having new conversations, sending out the link, getting really bold about sharing this with people and let people know, hey, I thought of you because, you know, and I reached out to a guy of mine. He's a dad of one of the kids at school. He's entrepreneurial. And I just said that to him. His wife is already on Juice Plus and I see how hard he works and how the weather is so detrimental to his business. If it rains, he can't go to work, you know? So having an online business to help supplement what he's already doing, that's all that I've put in the message. Hey, I see how hard you work. I love your entrepreneurial spirit. I love that you're a people person. I love how I've seen you care on people and over deliver when they come to your business. I think you would be amazing at what I do. You know, your wife already takes the product. She loves it. Your daughter's on the product. She loves it. They're getting amazing results. Imagine if you could create another stream of income that wasn't dependent on the weather, that wasn't dependent on other people, you know, coming in to see you on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, and that's it. I've done my job. I've planted the first seed with him. Now it's up to him to reach out now. And then the link. And then another seed. And then maybe inviting them over and, and coffee chat. So start planting the seeds, guys. You've got constantly got to have people coming into your, into your funnel. For so long, I just kept playing with the same people in my funnel. I wasn't adding new people. I kept expecting all the people in my warm market to eventually turn around and say, yeah, I'll do it now. Or it doesn't work like that. It's too many of the people that are in your funnel right now know too much about you. They know you haven't always been healthy. They know that you used to be binge drinking on, on weekends. They know that they know they know some of your most deepest secrets. And now that you're out there trying to be this online inspirer and this health nut, you know, sometimes people are too close to you to actually say yes and to see that you've grown and evolved. And um, one thing I want to share as well that, you know, when I reached 100 Club, I want to share a little bit about that journey because my son was about to be born. Um, the month before. And I remember in February that year, um, my daughter was hugging the phone every night to say goodnight to her daddy because he works flying, fly out. He usually, at the moment, he's doing three weeks away, one week home. It's insane. It's crazy. And I was in tears one night watching my daughter hug a phone and kiss a phone to say goodnight to her dad. And it broke my heart. And I was on tears to my partner and I just said, Babe, just give me a figure. Give me a figure that I can earn in this business to bring you home. And he threw this ridiculous figure out there. He goes, okay, you'd have to earn what I'm earning plus some. And he threw it out. And I got to work. I got so flipping busy and I 100 Club was in my sights. And I thought if I can reach 100 Club before my son comes along, then I'll be able to bring Tom home from the mines. And in August... Archer was due any moment, like end of August, early September. And um, it, came, it came down to the wire. It was in the last 
hour. And they're telling me, no, you don't have it. No, you're still two qualifiers away. No, you're still this many orders. And then they'll ring and they say, it looks like you've gone through, but we can't see it on the back end. They're ringing America to find out from head office. As Christine hit 100 Club, what can you see over there? Then I got the call, no, you haven't hit it. They can't see it. It Honestly, it was an emotional roller coaster that day. And I knew if I didn't hit it, there was a fat chance that I would hit it after my son was born because my focus would be taken. I'd have that mum brain and whatever. So the call came through at like 6 p.m. that night and oh, I just had tears of joy and gratitude and pride in what our team had accomplished. And I've even got the 100 names of the people. There's 102 names on here because we 102 people helped our team get to 100 club. And my son was born a couple of weeks later. And three days after he was born, I went to 90 day game plan with this brand new baby. And that night we had our 100 club party and it was insane. It was the biggest celebration. And then in December that year, Tom quit his fly in fly out job and he came home full time, seven months. He didn't work. He didn't leave. He was there. I remember walking our daughter to school for her very first day of school. And as a family, we all walked her to school. And I, I walked away with just absolute tears of gratitude thinking, holy shit, look what we accomplished. You know, Tom had no idea of what I was capable of until I said to him, babe, I've got this. You're coming home. And he was home for Christmas that year. He was home for our daughter's first day. And the bond... The bond that he has with our son because of the seven months full time that he got to spend with him is something that you can never take away from someone. That's an incredible gift that I was able to give someone else and that's what we get to do with this business and that's why I'll be doing this till I'm old and grey, until I'm probably I'm in the grey. Christine, and, Christine um, can you hear me? Yes. Christine, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay. I just want yes. to you know, acknowledge you for your just total all in attitude um you know i think that that's the other thing i mean how many of you guys can hear the hunger in her voice you know i was listening to eric worry do an interview with it's les brown that's my that's my rocket fuel for the day is i'll listen to a podcast every day and like yesterday you know um again i think it's a fourth time of listening to that les brown when he goes i want people that are hungry you know i mean if you can hear this isn't like if you can hear in her voice there is no um, I'll see if I have time. Um, I mean, you've made it work. And I think for people out there that say, well, I don't want my life to change. I like the way that my life is. I like to be able to do this and that. I'm, I am comfortable. But then they also really want this business. You know, what would you say to them? The ones that go, oh my gosh, well, the, if, if, if I do this and I won't be able to do some of these things with my kids, you know, because some people that it's actually just the opposite. They feel that it might, um, you know, it might kind of interfere with their life, if you would, if it gets too busy, if there's too many people that it's growing, right? So there's, there's both sides of it. That that you you yeah. understand what I mean? That was, yeah. Yes, and I'm glad that you brought that up because that was my biggest fear. It wasn't fear of failure. It was fear of success because our family unit was working really well. I've got an incredible relationship with Tom. And I kept saying to myself, wow, what if I'm so successful that it disrupts our family life? What if I'm so successful that it puts pressure on my marriage? What if I'm so successful that it absolutely turns our, the dynamics of our household on its head? And uh, I'm so glad that you brought that up. But you know what? This is so much bigger than me. This is so much bigger than any of us. We have, a, it's not like a career. This is a crusade. This is about leaving a legacy. This is about stepping up. And, you know, in order for us, you know, for our kids to pursue their dreams, we have to pursue ours. We can't play small because what example is that setting for the next generation? So my kids are my fuel. And then I want to be able to leave a legacy. I want to be remembered. I want people to say, because of that chick, that Christine Drummond, I've got a better quality of life. I now live a more inspired life because of her. Now, I've got a thousand year plan, guys, and I know that's probably really scary for some of you to even contemplate, but I've got a life coach 
and he made us write our thousand year plan. Some of you probably don't even have a five year plan, let alone a thousand year plan. And you're probably thinking, Christine, you're not going to be around for a thousand years. I know that, but I want my legacy to live on. I want to be that impactful that I am remembered in a thousand years time, you know, and that's the kind of message and purpose that we get with a vehicle like this. You know, this is, this is not about fruits and vegetables in a capsule and this is not about a Juice Plus franchise. This is about pursuing what you were meant to pursue with, in this physical form while you're here on this planet, you know, and then we're all just energy, you know, so it's not as if we die and that's it. We come back, you know, so you've got to go, how do I want to be remembered? What do I want people to say when I do kick the bucket? You know, is it that, oh, you know, she, and Emma, something that Emma Sneddon has always stuck with me, and if you're a mum on this call, this might really resonate with you, but Emma Sneddon came over to one of our conferences and she said, I don't want to be that mum that in 10 years' time I look my kids in the eye and I say, you know what, we could have had it all, but mum threw in the towel. Mum gave up. And I don't want to be that mum either. And, I, and that really resonated with me. So whatever your fears are, and I know some of you have fears of public speaking. I know some of you have fear of success, fear of failure. But what's the alternative? I mean, in this life, we get to choose our hard. And this business is friggin' hard. It is friggin' hard. And that's why, um, you know, so only so many of us get to the top because we're willing to do what the majority aren't. Because that's what we're hungry for. We want to live a life that not many people get to live. We want to contribute. That's what it's about for me now. What can, how can I make a bigger difference? And Lauren, you see what Lauren does on a daily basis for other people. She's the queen at contribution. She's the queen connector. You know, imagine being just half the person that that woman is. You know, the quality of life that you would have. So whatever your fears are, you have to know what they are, but then you need to go... What if? What if I, I could make like this with, work around my family? I think what also that you said is so important is that, you know, the minute that you make it about you, then the, the minute it's all about you and not like serving the greater good, right? Then, then that, that's when yeah. the energy, that's when the flow stops, if you will, um, with regards to that. Well, and Christine, it hasn't been easy, right? I mean, you've had people that you thought were going to be rock stars, rocking the business, or maybe some of them even went to NMD, right? And then they decided they needed to, that they should do something else, right? I mean, what would you say to those people on the line? I mean, you're back in the game full on. You've reinvented. You guys have reinvented your team. You got together, right? There's a lot of things that you guys have done, um, but it's always been that this is still, um, you know, top priority. So, I mean, I really want to acknowledge the people that are on because I know they want it. You know, the people that are on right now. Um, but I want them to, you know, I want to, what would you say the top three things are, are a must? Now, you you were um, SSCQ for how long before you even went to NMD? Yeah, well, it took me, it, um, it took me three. Yeah, three years to get to NMD and then the following year I hit 100 club. But guys, I'm nowhere near 100 club now. I've dropped down to 24 clubs, you know, but I'm not sitting here freaking out about it because I did the hard yards. I've built the foundation check. Um, I've had entire legs that were 11 generations deep just fall off because one of the leader has decided to do something else, had decided the grass is greener somewhere else and watching from the sidelines now, you know, it's not greener, you know, and I've had people leave. I've had people come back. Um, but here's the thing. Like, I, you just, you never know who's going to come around that corner and change the whole dynamics of your business. And, you know, we always get taught people come into your life for, for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And you have to see that. The people that get you to SC are not going to be the people that get, get you to NMD. It just, you're not going to be able to, um, you know, to do it for everyone. And for so long, I wanted it more for people than they wanted it for themselves. I could see how broke my friends were. I could see how um, much pain they were in physically, emotionally, spiritually, and I did all the work for them. But that can only get you so far because it gets exhausting and then you start feeling resentment because they don't have gratitude for everything that you've done. So you want to look for the people who are hungry. You want to look for the people who are fired up, that are ready, ready to change, that are ready to... Pull that 
bloody ripcord and just crack on, you know? So where do you find those people? Where do you find the people that are competitive, hungry, driven, um, business minded? Like, um, I find that a lot of mums um, sometimes have so much baggage, it's really hard to get them to get that belief in themselves. But what I found is people who played competitive sport growing up is a great place to start because they've got this competitive competitiveness, this hunger, this inner animal within them. Um, so sporting people are great to, to talk to about the business. Um, Business-minded people, entrepreneurs, you know, millennials, um, uni students, um, you know, really start to think about where am I going to find these hungry, driven people? And um, yes, you can find it definitely with the mums as well. But you have to realise, guys, that it's pretty only much it's pretty much only one or two rock stars that are going to come into your business a year, a year. So you might bring on I don't know twenty or thirty team in a year, but you're probably looking at one to two rock stars that just capture the vision and are going to go all the way. Like it's about one in one in six will get to, you know, sort of three club. You know, that's the stats. So you've got to talk to a shitload of people. You've got to be prepared to roll the sleeves up and just get out there and have conversations. Be bold about it. What if you could just have a little bit more boldness for the rest of the month and have, you know, 10x the amount of conversations that you're having and do nothing else but get invites out. Imagine if you just increase the number of invites a day from one to five. You know, imagine what your business would look like. Just, you know, putting on your, your hat of courage, putting on your hat of boldness and just going, you know what, I'm sick of being stuck. I'm sick of being here. I'm not going another year walking the stage as an SC. You know, that's where I find a lot of people get stuck for years is that SC. I don't know what it is, but that um, the biggest jump, the hardest jump for me was SSC to Q. And that's where I felt the most pride, the most gratitude was when I hit Q and MD. Because I knew the work I put in. It was friggin' hard. I was relentless. And that you've got to become obsessed. You have to become obsessed with the activities and you have to embrace all the activities. There's shit in this business that I don't want to do, but I do it because they're necessary. I do it because I know that that's what, what's going to get me the growth. That's what's going to get me to that next level. So you've got to, you've got to embrace everything about this business but make it fun along the way don't be so ambitious and goal-oriented like I was I remember when I first met Lauren I was so friggin serious um people I remember people meeting me for the first time going I don't didn't really like you when I first met you you're so serious and kind of stuck up and I'm like oh no you know um but you know don't take it so seriously enjoy the journey and just know that even if you were to earn $50 a week or $50 a month from this business and you just put that away in a compound interest account, you would set yourself up in 20 or 30 years' time, you know? So just be patient with the process but be persistent and be cons consistent as well. And if you do that, you, you can't go wrong. Honestly, just keep adding people to your funnel and keep inviting. So many people say that they're inviting but they're not. You're not actually being bold enough and you're not inviting enough people. Like, to be honest, inviting seven people a week, one person a day, when if you're converting one in 10, that means you're bringing on one team maybe a fortnight, maybe a month. Like, honestly, if you want better results, you've got to do increase the amount of work that you're doing. Go to, go to the gym and build that muscle, okay? And what I know you, um, you, well, I think there's a couple of things. You're amazing. I love it. I love that, you know, it's, uh, you're awesome. But I want to, I think that you can once again feel that this is a non-negotiable for you. You know, I think that both of us, you know, when we see what it's been able to do, especially now what we're able to say yes to because of our parents is huge. You know, I was just in DC and my brother wasn't able to take off work, you know, um, to be able to be, even though my mom's moved up there, he can't, he's in a secure building and he can't even get, you know, he can't even have his phone in case it was an emergency for my mom, you know? And I think there's so much that we just take for granted, you know? And I think there's that, um, Tony Robbins always says, you know, when you're aroused something enough, you tend to take it just a little bit for granted. And I, you know, and I know for you, you definitely don't take this for granted. I know that, you know, I know the people on the line don't take it for granted, but they, they, they're, that maybe they just need to, I'll let them ask some questions. Because I think we've got a lot of people that are stuck at that SC stage. 
um, right now that they wanted. They're coming to the events. I, you know, um, I'm not sure so much about what events putting on. I'll let them ask, you know, talk to you about that. But um, the other thing that I was going to say to you was um, you're coming to America for conference. What's it? Why is it a must for you to come here for the U.S. conference? I mean, we got people here in the USA that aren't even coming to conference. Why are you coming? Because I remember Jeff Roberti saying that that's what the one percenters do. The one percenters rock up at big events to conference, and it's something that stuck with me all these years. I've only missed one American conference one year, and that was last year. And I just really wanted to take a year off for my family because it's always been about Juice Plus. All our holidays have been around Juice Plus. So it's nice to have, you know, just one year focused on the family. But honestly, guys, like, I, I don't miss it. I never, I've never missed a national conference. And I've never, well, I've missed one year of going to America. And um, it killed me because I, I got so much FOMO. Um, but it's where it might just be that one thing that you hear or that one someone will say something differently or you're ready to hear it in a different way and that it'll make that one degree of change in your business and set your whole business on a new direction or your personal growth. But the thing that I see that holds so many people back in this business is the, it, it's kind of the fear of shame. You know, it's the fear of judgment. It's the fear of embarrassment. You know, what if I say, what if I reach out and I get rejected? What if, um, you know, people are carrying baggage. I was carrying baggage. I was telling myself I was a bad person because I've done some things that have hurt people in the past. I've had things happen to me that I felt shame around, but I've been able to deal with it. You've got to be able to own all your parts, guys, like your good, your good traits and your bad. You know, I know that I can be a, a bitch sometimes. I know that I'm hot-headed. I know that I can fly off the radars and, and just have rage, but you know what? I own that. And you have to own it. You're like there's three versions of ourselves. There's the public version, you know, the nice version that we're putting on Facebook that everybody sees when we meet people. Then there's the, the, um, the personal version, you know, the private version that your family sees, you know, when you're a angry, when you're hangry and, you know, when you're shouting at the kids, when you're eating a burger or having a Coke. And then there's the really personal version where you've got your own secrets and, you know, Pete, you've got your own thoughts and things like that. So you want to align those three versions as closely as you can to each other. Because if you don't, I'll tell you what's happened to me over the last year. I've been in a massive loser funk. I haven't recruited in 12 months and my business has suffered. That's exactly why I'm at 24 Club because I had this loser mentality. I stopped recruiting. I basically, after Archer was born, I went into management mode because I thought, oh, I'll just help my team now. I don't need to build. And now look what it's done to my business. And I had people question my character and it really shook my confidence and I was in a funk. And it wasn't until maybe, I don't know, a couple of days ago that I went, you know what? Fuck it. I know who I am. I know the person that I want to be and I'm going to rise up because me playing small and being in this loser mentality, it's not helping my team. It's not helping my family. It's not helping my friends. It's not helping my kids. And so I've taken it to a whole new level. So it's about to get real. Shit's about to hit the fan. I hit 40 Watch next out, year Christine. and I want to be fit as fuck next Watch year when I turn 40. So that's my goal. <laughs> So I'm and coming for you. And if you guys. It takes a lot of courage to be honest about that too. I mean, like all of us, it's easy to like go into our own pity party. Right. But like you said, you know, you, other people are counting on you to step up. You know what I mean? And um, so I think somebody has a question with regards to it. So conference, getting to conference, being to conference, because those are the one percenters, you know, this is, and also you're here to leave a legacy a thousand years. I know that you've invested a lot in personal development because you know how important that that is. I know you've been to Eric's event. We've got the we've got the freaking most powerful women event here that Linda and Kate are going to be speaking at. Um, you know, so it is that that part that we need to step into, hear those great things. I mean, the concepts and the techniques that people do, but basically we get paid to put on people and put on new distributors and create raving fans and duplicate and celebrate. Somebody has a question. I'm going to let... Um, Let's see. If you have a question, can you unmute? Because I'm um, upstairs. Let's see. Yes, Karina, I think. 
Hi, yes, I have a question. So uh, when you were talking about building your team, how much time would you say average when you're working a day? And then once you build the team, how much time uh, do you invest in maintaining that team? Um, don't, don't maintain your team. <laughs> you want to really empower them to maintain themselves. But in the beginning, honey, like I was doing this in very stolen moments. I don't know how much I was putting in maybe an hour or two a day. Um, but I made sure I was turning up to everything. I never skipped an event. I never skipped a Cortese call. I never skipped Lauren's training. Um, I was jumping on absolutely everything. I was filling my cup and I was learning um, so in the beginning, um, it's different when you're in building mode, like you're just, you're just in full on action mode, getting team in, getting customers. And it got to a point where I did drop into management mode and I started to maintain the team. I started to enable them rather than empower them. That's the thing. Like when team come to me now and ask me a question, I'm like, um, well, what would you say? Or where do you think you would find that? You know, but Simon Chan teaches that, in any leadership role, you've really only got room to hold the hand of six people at a time. You know, so who are your six? Who are your six team that deserve your time and deserve to hear from you on a daily basis? You know, I've definitely got my six and I've got a few other team that shoot me through a picture of their teamsy or what they've been up to as well. But I've got my key six that I'm working with this month to help them get to their next goal. So at the moment, um, I spend my first hour of the day is all on my business building activities. And then I have to go and fill my own cup. So I go to float tanks, I go get massages, I go for girly lunches, um, I do all that. And then I fill in three-way calls and um, team trainings and stuff around that. But it only takes me about 60 to 90 minutes a day to full on build my um, and that's connecting with about 30 to 40 people, um, adding 10 new people, sending three links, um, you know, reaching out to 10 customers and six team members. So, you know, it all takes about 60 to 90 minutes a day to do that. And then that opens my day up to do things in my life that bring me joy so that I can be a better version of myself. Does that make sense? But in the beginning, I sacrificed a bit of that to just go nuts in the business. So it depends where you're at. But here's the thing, guys. I'm building in Sacramento right now. I am friend requesting the heck out of people over there. So if you're not looking to build people there, I'm coming to get them. And I'm so surprised that when I'm using the Ninja Search tool that none of you guys are popping up as friends with these people that I'm friend requesting and getting to know right now. So this little Aussie girl is coming over to get your peeps. Yeah. So are you going to let someone go and join someone else's team for a whole new country or are you going to get into action mode and go, holy shit, this is the kick up the ass? Because who's had that happen? Who's had that happen where yeah. someone that you spoke to or someone that you wanted to reach out to go and join someone else's team or bought the products of someone else and you kicked yourself because you didn't have the courage to say to speak up you thought you had time you thought you had time to reach out to them and you didn't and now the opportunity has gone and you left there it's happened to me on so many occasions and i love it because it's just another kick up the bum to go you know what you need to be bolder you need to step up you need to be more courageous you need to go into massive action i, I want to i want to acknowledge yvette she is on from the uk so it's like three in the morning there so she jumped on to hear you christine and get her kick up the butt um, awesome. So, one last, um, one last, one last bit of advice that you want to share with anybody, or what would you say to people that are, that they're just kind of, they're comfortable. Um, they're putting on a couple people. They, they see, yeah, they see all this great success. They see how hungry you are. They see what's been able to do for your family. They know what's possible, but they're just not maybe doing the activity at the level to get from that SC to that SSC level. What would you say to them? We don't have an abundance of time, guys. We really don't. You know, there's, there's gonna, life is going to happen to you and you can either do the work now so that you're prepared when life happens, like exactly what's happening to my dad. If I was only like a, a DVF in the business and not earning what I'm earning now, it would be very unlikely I could pick the family up and move them to spend my, last, my dad's last years with him. You know how important that is? Imagine like just have that vision it might be someone else in your family or maybe one of your 
your kids get sick. You know, one of our friends here that does Juice Plus, her daughter got cancer, you know, because of the income she was making from this, it helped keep the family afloat. You know, imagine if that happened. So don't wait for the scare. Don't wait for the Mack truck to hit you in life before you actually get your ass into gear. Get it into gear now. There's never been a better time. Our tomorrows are not promised. So live life now. Live, live in a fearless, unstoppable state and stop worrying about what other people think. The minute that I released that and stopped caring so much about what people thought of me, I just felt this enormous weight lift off my shoulders and I was able to really, truly step into my greatness. I stepped into my power. And until you do that, guys, you're going to be squashing your potential and you're going to have this glass ceiling and you're going to continually bump your head on it because you're too worried about what other people are thinking. And most of the time, they're not even thinking about you. They're too busy thinking about themselves. So if you don't want that person's lifestyle, if you don't want that person's paycheck, then just get out there and do what you need to do. Be the person you were born to be. Go out there and bloody shit or shine, as I like to say. <laughs> so just get out there and create whatever it is you want to create. It's not going to happen awesome. for you. You've got to do the work. Awesome. Well, we love you, and I'm so honored. Thank you for jumping on. It's great to have you on, and I can't wait to see you next month. But I'm going to see who you're friending so that I can get them before you do. I'm just kidding. I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Game on. Game, Game on. on. Get so I can do some sit-ups with and you. So anyway. All right, sweetie. Um, thank uh, you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me.